This is uh, paramedic class. Uh, this chapter, Introduction to Paramedicine, is covered in uh, covering Volume 1, Chapter 1. The standard is preparatory of EMS systems. To our competency we hope to meet is integrates comprehensive knowledge of EMS systems and safety and well-being of the paramedic the medical, legal, and ethical issues, which are intended to improve the health of EMS personnel, patients, and the community. Now, before we get too far into this, um, I want you guys to take a minute, and I want you to press pause. I want you to list on a paper uh, all the roles that you feel like the paramedic serves and how they help the So as you're reading, uh, the paramedic is a highly trained healthcare professional. Uh, they provide comprehensive, compassionate, efficient pre-hospital emergency care. And as you progress further in your career, you will learn more and more about healthcare. Uh, you'll take on additional duties and you will learn more about wound care. You will learn more about chronic uh, patients and conditions, and your uh, education will continue to grow um, beyond this uh, initial education into the uh, entry-level paramedic. As a description of the profession, we need to start with the levels. First level, emergency medical responder. Give immediate life-saving care for critical patients or to critical patients. Uh, the key here is recognition and immediate life-saving care to critical patients. Uh, think first aid, CPR, and a little bit of advanced wound care, uh, tourniqueting, splinting, that sort of thing, your basic knowledge. And then we build on that and we go into the emergency medical technician, uh, basic emergency medical care, transportation for critical and emergency patients. So you go a little bit further into the uh, to the EMT level, and you're starting to give uh, more basic medications. You're giving aspirin and assisting with aspirin and nitro, uh, breathing treatments, oral glucose, uh, activated charcoal, those sorts of things. We keep moving on. We go to the AEMT, Basic and Limited Advanced Emergency Medical Care, including transportation, or critical and emergent patients. So as you progress into your advanced emergency medical technicians, you're thinking more into the AL, ACLS realm, the advanced cardiac life support, advanced medications, um, epinephrine, uh, atropine, lidocaine, amiodarone, um, and advanced pharmacology. Potentially advanced airways, depending on the location and the, your scope of practice. And then we come to the paramedic, advanced emergency medical care for critical and emergent patients and complex decision making. So AEMT uh, falls into kind of a if this, then this uh, type of care. If this is what is shown, this is the medication that's uh, given for that, then this is what you do. The paramedic uh, takes into account uh, more history gathering, uh, importance of patient assessment, and what they find on the monitor, um, and all their other tools that they have at their disposal, and their knowledge that they gain through the, through the paramedic course. Uh, you're going into advanced airways, intubation, uh, surgical airways, uh, chest decompressions, uh, and so on. The modern paramedic encompasses the disciplines of healthcare, public health, and public safety. We provide emergency medical care in and out of the hospital setting, uh, mainly in the out of hospital setting. It makes accurate and independent judgments based on their experience and their knowledge. As your experience grows, your knowledge base will grow. The more independent uh, judgments, uh, the more independent your judgments will be making. 
they have the appropriate licensing and credentialing. Of course, that's important. Um, depending on your state, you may be a licensed paramedic, you may be a certified paramedic here in Kansas, we're certified. Um, in Texas, they have both licensed and certified paramedics, and there is a difference in what they are allowed to do and even pay to an extent. Uh, modern EMS combination of public health, public safety, and healthcare. As you can see, they all come together and they all intertwine a little bit with each other and right in the middle is where we fall. We are a public safety group as we are a first response agency or organization. Um, many times combined with either a police department or a uh, fire department or a public third service or even a uh, private service. We give health care. Uh, we deliver health care in the pre-hospital setting. Um, we also uh, contribute to public health. We give trainings on CPR, first aid. Uh, we educate the public. We educate children at the show and tells that we do, um, so on and so forth, which contributes to the uh, public safety as well. Bike rodeos, uh, handing out helmets and car seats to people that need them that may not be otherwise able to afford them uh, to protect the kids um, and, and protect the, uh, the public at large. The modern paramedic funder functions under uh, direction of EMS's medical director. Uh, your EMS medical director is the one who collaborates with uh, local medical community, uh, with the state medical community to develop your uh, standing orders and also may be the one that you call for online medical direction. Uh, in many cases, online medical direction is the hospital in which you are delivering your patient to, uh, which you will call them directly and speak with the emergency room physician at that time if there is something that you need um, outside of your medical direction or if there is questions that you have uh, that you're not sure exactly where to go or how to treat the patient. Uh, the modern paramedic also has the knowledge, skills, and attitude consistent with the expectations of public and profession. So. The public looks to us to have the knowledge and the skills um, to handle uh, to handle the situations. Um, our attitudes consider with consistent with expectations, so our attitude needs to be that as well. While yes, uh, the knowledge and skills are there, um, our attitude needs to be one of constant. Uh, everything is a learning experience. There's always uh, constant growth. Uh, we're not too good to do anything. Uh, we will take care of the little grandma that just needs a ride to the hospital as well as the full cardiac arrest just down the street. And we are a component in the continuum of care. We are a link between health resources. Um, you know, if you think about the link of uh, the chain of survival uh, developed, or I'm not sure if AHA developed it, but is taught in AHA classes, you know, there is the bystander care. Ultimately, they phone dispatch, and then dispatch dispatches uh, emergency medical services, and so on and so forth on down the chain and delivered to the hospital, to, uh, to the emergency room, ultimately out to definitive care as needed from there. Um, we maintain high quality health care at a reasonable cost. There's many facets to maintaining high quality health care at a reasonable cost. There's maintaining our education, our knowledge base, expanding both our education and knowledge base, as well as our equipment. We need to maintain our equipment and keep it in top operating condition. Uh, equipment includes everything from the fingertip uh, pulse oximetry to our monitors to our ambulances. Uh, it's as if we keep those, if we do not maintain those and they break down, that costs money. That money gets sent on to the patient at the end uh, to maintain to help maintain those costs uh, those, that equipment we are also advocates for the patient we need to advocate for what we feel that they need uh, we use our knowledge and experience and our skills uh, to develop a working diagnosis or a working treatment plan and we need to advocate for that uh, as well as the patient is going into the hospital and into the ER to make sure that they understand what uh, we want the, uh, make sure that the hospital 
understands what we have found and our uh, what we have done to help the patient to get them what they want. We need to, along with that, is ensuring the patient receives the best possible care without regard to the ability we pay or insurance status. We don't care. We don't care if they don't have the money. We don't care if they don't have insurance. We are there to treat the patient. We are not there to pass judgment. We are not there to decide, well, you know, they can't really afford the pain medicine, so we're going to withhold that pain medicine. That's not that's not what we're here for. We are here to develop the best possible, or not develop, I'm sorry, deliver the best possible care available that we have to give regardless. We don't ask for insurance. We don't ask for credit cards. We don't do that. That's not our job. We are there to take care of the patient the best that we can. We take part in public education. Um, if you think about all the illness and injury prevention programs that you can think of, CPR is one, bike rodeos are, one, are some, DARE, those kinds of things. Take a minute and write a list. Think of all the things you can come up with. Things that you may have personally uh, participated in. And then mobile integrated healthcare, community paramedicine. This is a newer concept that's just uh, come gaining traction in the past several years. Uh, they function outside the customary emergency response and transport roles in that they may be, they, they can take on a, another certification or a, a further education to decide, help decide um, where else can this patient go? Do they necessarily need the emergency room or can they go to a clinic or to a doctor's office? Do they need to go right now? Do they need to go to wound care? Can they wait? Can they call and schedule an appointment? That kind of thing. Those kinds of things. They also do dressing changes, home health care type stuff. Dressing changes, make sure the patient understands their medications and how to take them and when they should be taking them, and looks for problems uh, to stop the um, frequent flyer type stuff. Not necessarily stop, but curtail the frequent flyer uh, and get them back on the road to Main, health maintenance on their own. This not only helps congestion in the EMS system, it also helps with congestion within the uh, emergency rooms. And some of our paramedic characteristics, we're flexible. Flexibility comes in many forms, not just physical, but we're talking about like we have a multi-truck system. You have two trucks that cover the city, and maybe you just finished your call and you're on your way back to the station and a call comes out two mile, or two minutes from your location and the other truck is at the station and they're 10 minutes from uh, the location of the call. Flexibility in that, okay, you know you're there, take that call. You know, run the extra call. It's take a little bit extra time to uh, cover a few minutes for your partner to get in. Um, maybe you're having to cover a football standby or a race standby where you hadn't planned on it prior to. Um, these are all things that uh, cover in flexibility plus much more. You need to be a confident leader. You need to be confident in your abilities. And that comes with time. It's not expected immediately, but you should be confident in your basic skills enough to, and getting confidence in your, in your advanced skills. Um, that you develop into a confident leader and you're able to run, lead a call, lead a team and, and take care of your patient. Excellent judgment. Kind of speaks for itself, but using uh, your knowledge and experience to make the best choices for not only for yourself, for your team and your, and your patient. You prioritize decisions. What needs to happen right now? What can wait for a minute? What needs to be taken care of? What needs to be fixed? What can we deal with in a few minutes? You need to be able to develop rapport with a wide variety of patients. We run on everybody. Every eco socioeconomic status, every uh, race, creed, you name it, we run on them. We run on Jehovah's Witnesses. We run on Catholics, we run on atheists, we run on the 
richest of the rich and the poorest of the poor. Uh, you need to be able to be able to converse, uh, have conversation and be able to ask questions uh, and have a presence uh, that they feel comfortable talking to you about these questions or talking to you about their health concerns and their problems. And you need to be able to function, in, function independently. There's nobody there watching over your shoulder. So this is something that needs to happen on your own while you're out there by yourself. We are a true health profession. We have continuing education programs. There is required continuing education through the state and through the National Registry. Um, we review and practice skills and procedures. That's why during this program, we will review all of our basic interventions. We'll review basic medications. We will review basic airway maintenance and uh, management, and we will re-perfect those if need be. We will make sure that we are proficient in all of our skills. We will do peer evaluation. Not only will I be evaluating you and others within the field, but you will be evaluating each other. You take an active role in professional and community organizations. Take an active role in the Southwest, or I'm going to say Southwest Kansas EMS region. However, we're not all from Southwest Kansas. So take an active role in your regional EMS system. Take an active role in your local medical community or um, any uh, community organization, professional organization. Take part and be part of that, and be heard, and advance the, pro advance the profession. Public education is an important part of the paramedic's job. We're not out here just to respond to calls. We are also out to educate the public on, uh, on CPR, on health in general, on health maintenance, uh, things that make a difference in, in the chain of survival. The National Emergency Medical Services Education Guidelines. This program, this class, is based off the National and State of Kansas Emergency Medical Services Educational Standards. Um, we do, um, it is outlined in a uh, rather large book, um, everything that they want uh, taught, and not how, but what they want taught. Uh, how, uh, what medications, what procedures, uh, this is all decided on at the national and state levels, and that passes down to us as educators. <clears throat> Paramedics participate in research. Whether you know it or not, you're participating in research. And the more accurate and the more timely your documentation and your treatments and everything are, the more accurate the research is. Um, our many run sheet programs are a collective uh, I know in the state of Kansas, many services use Kemsis, um, and all that data. There's a lot of demographic and data collection that is taken out, taken from those, and that's why most services in the state participate in that, and they participate in research for the state trauma councils and national trauma councils. Acceptance and adherence to a code of professional ethics and etiquette. By doing this. Um, we are adhering to a code of professional ethics and etiquette. We are bound by this as it is what guides us in what we do. What is ethical? What is right? And how should we behave while doing it? It falls back on the, we run a call. Do we immediately go talk about it at, uh, in the line at McDonald's while we're getting our lunch? Do we talk about the people and the places and the things we run? This is just part of it. That's, that's just poor ethic, or that's poor etiquette. The emergency patient is always the primary concern. 
we may get called to a location. It'd find two different patients. The, the emergent patient is always the primary concern. Um, if your cross-training happens, uh, if you're a fire service, you're probably cross-trained as a fire, uh, firefighter. If you're a police-based service, you're probably cross-trained as a police officer. Uh, part uh, participate in rescue operations, directing traffic, and other tests on an emergency scene. However, if you are there as a paramedic, the emergency patient is always the primary concern or traffic control over fighting the fire. Um, remember, you can only wear one hat at a time. Within the paramedic realm, there is the expanded scope of practice. 911 response is the primary. Um, but within the 911 response, you're looking at uh, trained further into community paramedicine, uh, maybe something that is there. Uh, New Mexico used to have a program um, where paramedics would go into the mountains and they would be similar to a physician's assistant. Um, there is uh, hazmat medics. There is critical care transport medics, helicopter, air ambulance, paramedics, tactical EMS are a couple of examples. Mobile integrated healthcare. These are the ones that roll out to communities and run mobile clinics, industrial medicine, obviously working in an industrial setting, beef packing plants, um, and manufacturing plants, that sort of thing. Sports medicine, uh, they work with the trainers and the sports doctors, corrections in the penal system within the uh, prison system and jails and emergency uh, hospital emergency departments. Uh, paramedics are gaining more roles uh, right alongside the nurses within the emergency departments. Critical care transport uh, vehicles to move the patients between facilities. So you're looking at several different things. You've got specialized ground ambulances. You know, these are going to be more equipped for a long distance transfer. They're going to have pot potentially more comfortable cots um, depending on the patient and what the patient's needs are. Um, some of uh, children's hospitals have TVs, DVD players, and gaming systems. Um, Then you have fixed wing aircraft, which are your uh, traditional aircraft, um, helicopters or rotor wing, you may hear them referred to as that, uh, large vehicles mounted on truck chassis. So that would fall under your specialized ground ambulance. Uh, they are put on a heavier truck chassis for greater distance, uh, potentially more comfortable. This would be an example of a uh, mounted on a heavy truck chassis. This is St. Louis Children's Hospital Ambulance here, and this is one of those that I was uh, mentioning that has a TV, DVD player, gaming systems, uh, that kind of thing, uh, all mounted up in the back. They are able to provide pretty much everything that an ICU can provide. There is onboard uh, medical air, oxygen, obviously, suction, um, in the, in the instance of NICU, they have isolates uh, that maintain temperature, humidity, uh, heat, or um, environment that's needed. Um, they can support ventilators. They can sp uh, support CPAP. Um, everything that in a uh, ICU room is, is mounted in the back of these ambulances. Helicopter air ambulances. Staffed with two medical crew members often include paramedics, um, usually a paramedic and a nurse or a nurse and an RT. Um, depends on the configuration and what it's and what they're where they are based. Uh, flight paramedic typically will respond both to scene calls and inter facility calls. The helicopter is becoming more and more of an important part of the modern EMS system as they can. As their ranges increase, they are being spread out across the states. 
further away from the level one trauma centers and they can travel much faster than a ground ambulance. And the advantage of them being able to take off and land at a scene uh, makes them a very valuable resource to the pre-hospital setting. Along with your expanded scope of practice, you have tactical EMS. These are the ones that are teamed with sheriff's departments and police departments um, and respond with SWAT, uh, SWAT teams and special operations for law enforcement, uh, military, uh, this would fall into your uh, pararescue group um, within the Air Force and the Special Forces community. Uh, they enhance safety of special for, uh, special operations personnel and public. They're right there to um, render aid as needed. They are generally cross-trained as police officers and carry weapons. Uh, not always, but that is becoming more the rule than the exception. Um, they deliver life-saving care within austere or dangerous environments um, until the patient can be safely evacuated out to the by, uh, standby EMS units. Uh, mobile integrated health. Again, these are the mobile clinics. Um, they are in close contact with medical direction and provide care at a scene without transport to the hospital. They also have specialized crew that periodically assess and monitor high-risk patients in the community. If they know that there is a high population of elderly or um, people of similar socioeconomic backgrounds that have similar um, ailments, they'll respond to a ambulance or a mobile clinic of some sort to those areas, and they will do, uh, provide intermittent um, checkups and screenings for that community, found generally in the bigger cities. Now in industrial medicine, this includes industrial sites and meat packing plants as we spoke earlier, assembly plants, oil rigs, those kinds of things. Um, they are also cross-trained in safety inspection, accident prevention, medical screening of employees to include pre and post drug uh, accident drug screens. Um, Vaccinations and immunizations, if the if the uh, organization or the community or the what you call it um, industry uh, requires it, uh, they increase employee safety and decrease lost time from work, um, as they can respond to this uh, and decide whether the patient needs to um, needs to be removed from the work environment or if they can be bandaged and return to work. The industrial paramedic provides several important services in addition to emergency care, as we said, the um, safety inspections, accident uh, response, uh, and those sort of things. In sports medicine, injury prevention and injuries specific to sports, um, they are they work right alongside sports uh, trainers and, or athletic trainers, and they are probably cross trained as athletic trainers as well. Uh, corrections medicine, uh, initial prisoner medical intake assessment. Um, they oversee the medical needs of the prison population and respond to emergencies. They work alongside generally a nurse or a physician uh, within the corrections environment and they are usually on scene at all times when the nurse and the physician may not be. In the emergency room, uh, in the emergency departments, roles vary state to state. Some states, uh, paramedics are allowed to function uh, very closely to, if not the exact same as a nurse, um, and others that they are uh, not allowed to take primary care over a patient, but they are allowed to assist the nurses and what are in expanded scopes of practice. Um, they are allowed to give medication, certain medications, start IVs, do blood draws, uh, catheterize, that kind of thing. Um, they assist the nursing staff with skills and responsibilities within the scope of paramedicine. Uh, depending on the state, that may be limited, whereas Kansas, so long as there is physician oversight, uh, the cap on your scope of practice will be what your physician decides it to be. 
In summary, the EMS recognized as a staple within the healthcare system, paramedics are identified and underutilized medical experts, or identified as underutilized medical experts, and it's very true. Um, there are many, many places that paramedics could be used on a regular basis, and it, it's becoming more and more uh, widespread that the paramedics are being pulled into additional areas and trained as needed to fulfill other roles as well as the paramedic role. As scope of practice for paramedicine continues to expand, so will the demand for skilled practitioners. There is uh, beginning to be a shortage of uh, paramedics and Paramedic is the first member of the healthcare system to whom the patient interacts. We are paramedic and EMT. EMS in general is the first member member of the healthcare system with whom the patient interacts. Um, if you're th thinking of a nursing level type, nursing type level introduction into the healthcare system, then yes, we are the first member of the healthcare system with whom the patient interacts. Results can affect a patient's opinion of the healthcare system in general. We need to be courteous. We need to be cautious. We need to be confident. We need to be knowledgeable. The EMS is a profession in which you can make a difference. Absolutely. You can make a difference in somebody's life. It may be the smallest little thing that you do for the person that you think is the least sick or injured it may make the biggest impact. Every call and every patient interaction has the potential to make the difference between life and death. This is very true. That is definitely something to keep in mind. Mandatory copyright. 